You might well have noticed now, and we certainly have, that we are in the depths of winter. And uh, biking, when it's cold, can be something of a struggle. It can be, but it doesn't actually have to be. It can be quite an enjoyable thing. Beating the elements is actually very satisfying sometimes. Very satisfying, quite easily done, but be prepared, you do have to spend some money. So Harry and I are now going to round up some of our best staying warm winter tips and show you some of the products that really you can't do without. To start with, everyone says that to keep the core warm, you've got to keep the extremities warm. So that means your hands and your feet. Now, look at this. Look at those. Aren't they beautiful? Thermal socks, these are by BMW. You can get them, all outdoor shops will have this kind of thing. These are called functional socks, by the way. As opposed to unfunctional socks. Playful socks, you know. Gloves, they're not <laughs> functional socks, are they? No, not really. Anyway. Um, so a good long sock, thermal, it'll keep you warm, not waterproof. No. That's the only problem. No, but I can up the ante a little bit. These are also from BMW. These are uh, slightly suspicious looking, but they are <laughs> waterproof socks. And what you will notice and what we've always noticed is the fact that if you get any kind of waterproof kit, then by its very nature, it's also windproof. And a lot of staying warm in the middle of winter is about cutting the wind chill factor down. These, although waterproof, slip inside your boots, obviously, um, quite affordable and keep you very, very warm indeed. The only disadvantage, obviously, is you've got this waterproof kit on, you tend to sweat a bit mm. once it cools down. That is true. Let's move it on from socks. Obviously, covering your socks, you need a good boot. And in winter, that means warmth, and it means being waterproof. This is an Alpine Stars touring boot. As you can see, it's not very fancy. There aren't many panels, but that's designed to keep it waterproof. It has a very warm lining. Uh, that's got a special nanotechnology that basically means that you can keep your feet in there all, all day, which you would be if you're touring. And uh, if you're like me and you've got a pair of stinky feet, uh, this sorts that problem out. Touring boots are different on the bottom because they have a much more comfortable sole. They're designed so that you can walk around in them all day without feeling uncomfortable. There is protection at the toe and at the heel, as you would expect. Otherwise, a very simple boot, but that's what you want. Keeps you warm, keeps you waterproof. Hands. Now, hands are an important thing, as you can imagine, with a motorbike. A good pair of winter gloves. Windproof, waterproof. And for me, the most important thing is this collar here, which, when you stick it on, it fits over the opening of your sleeve, so it stops any draft getting up inside here. A good pair of these, not that expensive. I mean, certainly for just less than a thousand rand, which might sound quite expensive, but you've got to protect the hands. If you fancy a winter glove which is a little bit more stylish than Harry's uh, rather dull example there, uh, this Alpine Star set, these are more of your traditional shorter road gloves, so they don't come up so far with a gauntlet. Now, the problem with that in winter, as Harry said, the gauntlets are very important because it makes your whole arm more uh, airproof, if you like, wind chill proof. Mm. The shorter ones, if you do get it, this is a very good idea, it's got a soft elastic elasticated band on it even, and uh, that will also keep the wind out. Uh, I must admit, though, if you're in the depths of winter, the bigger gauntlet gloves are the way to go. Moving further up with the extremities, the head, and more importantly, the neck. Your helmet's covered, your body's covered, but it often leaves a big gap right here. Now, this is where one of these things comes in handy. They're called a buff. That's it, and it's wrapping. And this is basically what it is when it's unwrapped. It's just a tube of fabric which you stick over your head, wrap around your neck, you can pull it up over your mouth before you put your helmet on. It makes a ridiculous amount of difference. It's probably the cheapest and easiest way of protecting yourself uh, against some cold. But now, Matt, you're looking very fetching. I'm not about to head down the bank and do a job. This is <laughs> actually a buff raised one notch. Obviously, you now get to cover your ears and your actual head. The problem with a lot of racy type helmets is they tend to be, excuse me, <laughs> they tend to be very sort of breezy by design. They're designed to keep your uh, head nice and cool during a hot summer. This will allow you to make that helmet windproof, if you like, and stay really, really cosy warm. Personally, I don't like them, but uh, a buff is enough for me. A buff's plenty. I get a bit claustrophobic in those, but they are exceedingly uh, effective. They are very effective indeed. Right, what's next? So next, okay, the extremities are dealt with. What about the body? Well, the first obvious thing is a jacket. Like this one, four season, it's called waterproof, a zip-out thermal liner. You cannot believe how cosy and warm these will actually keep you. The Velcro closing at the top and at the, at the arms. Everybody does one of these, every manufacturer. There are hundreds on the market. This is an Alpine Stars. Price, any idea of the price? About 4,000 Rand. 
you can expect to pay about that much, but the zip out, the liner, the thermal liner does zip out, so it's very versatile. It's got ventilation as well, so if it does start to warm up later in the day, you can at least get some air fl uh, flowing through you, which is vitally important, because otherwise you're just going to sweat absolutely buckets in this. Well, one way I can guarantee that you're going to sweat is to uh, raise it up yet another level. If you want to stay warm and you could ride across the North Pole with something like this, this is from BMW, but again, there are other manufacturers. It's a piece of clothing that actually plugs into your bike. A lot of the adventure bikes have uh, auxiliary sockets, so very easy to hook up. You normally think of like GPSs and that sort of thing, but you can hook your clothing up. Now, this is a vest, costs about three and a half thousand rand. Uh, charges from your bike, keeps you nice and toasty and warm because it heats up. There's obviously some kind of element in there. But the beautiful thing about this is that when you step away from the bike, you've arrived at your destination, it's still obviously freezing. You're doing a bit of sightseeing. You're going to be warm. Two hours of standby time in this, so it'll keep warming you for two hours while you do whatever you need to do. Fantastic invention. I want one. Right, that's the top of the body sorted out. But what about the legs? Now, you could wear a pair of long johns, but unfortunately, it's difficult to take them off, so when you get to your destination, you could be sitting there with two layers of trouser on and you're sweating buckets. This is a good idea. Obviously, most manufacturers, like the Alpine Stars jacket, they have matching pants, but this is a really good idea from our friends at uh, Cross Culture, Joe Berg Company. They are actually a brilliant idea, because when you arrive at your destination, you just do this and this. Zip that up there. Yeah. Zip that up there, and they're off. As easy as that. Windproof, waterproof, nice and thick, protective padding, so if you do come off, you've got some protection. These are a brilliant idea for about 1,300 Rand. They're absolutely fantastic, and you can keep your smart pants uh, you know, looking good for ready to go into that meeting. I have to say, that's what, and what a brilliant thing that it's a locally made product. Absolutely. That, what a fantastic piece of kit. It's, and it's so easy to get on. They're called Easy Overs, and you can see why. Absolutely, very good. Well, the reason we've done all this looking at winter warmer kit, it's not just about staying warm. Obviously, that's the main thrust of it, but staying warm means you stay safe. And why is that? Well, you try being out on the road for a couple of hours, being absolutely freezing. All you can think about is how much pain you're in. You're not paying attention to the road. Yeah. Stuff can and your reaction time is actually affected. You know, even if you're just moving your hand from the handlebar to the brake, you slow down completely. So it's, it's a great safety tip. You've got to stay warm. And it just makes riding pleasurable. Any other little personal safety tips you can pass on, Harry? Something hot, you do in winter? Hot water bottle down my jacket. That's great. So for the rest of the day, you carry around a cold <laughs> hot water bottle. Good one. I'll tell you what one of mine is, and I don't know if it's just because I'm a little bit of a heavy breather, but during winter, you're riding with the visor full down all the time to mm. try and keep yourself a little bit warm. The tendency is it, you can steam the visor up then, and then you're opening up again, then you're freezing again. It's all a bit... Mm. What you need is something called a fog city. In a visor, it means you can keep your visor, visor down and you won't steam up. It, see, it's a very cheap thing. Uh, it seems like not worth doing, but really, make the effort. It will vastly improve your winter riding.